we're going to meet a guy today that reminds me a little bit of Joe DeSena here. He is an excuse destroyer. He is a guy who takes other people and shows them what is possible, what they're what they can do. I, as usual, I've got the lovely Sephora standing here to my right. I've got my boss and friend Joe DeSena and good friend Johnny Wade over here on the far left. And and, and I am and I am Tim Nye, the Colonel. And we are going to be back after the interview because what we do is we talk about what we learned from it and how you can apply that in your life. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Athletic Greens. Ensure your body gets the nutrition it needs. Athletic Greens has an offer just for our listeners. Go to athleticgreens.com slash Spartan to get a free box of 20 travel packets with your order, a $100 value. We are here for Spartan Up Podcast in my favorite barn in the entire world, Pittsfield, Vermont. With Johnny Jonathan Lopez. John is not your typical, can I call you John? Yes, sir. Not your typical Spartan. I mean, this guy eats shredded steel for breakfast, always smiling, always Lopezing people. And what that means is he goes in, rips people off the couch, gets them out of their comfort zone, and tells them they could do things that they never thought they could do. Um, you've obviously been injured. Yes, sir. Um, but you haven't let it affect you. Well, I did at the beginning. Um, it was, I felt like something was taken from me. And I wanted to place all the responsibility on that person. I feel myself with hate, like I lost my military career. Uh, I was very dependent on my physical abilities. That's the, what, who I, how I define myself, the ability to run, my ability to actually like do pull-ups or climb. And when that was taken away from me, I, I just thought I had nothing left. Um, now I have found a new purpose. I mean, Spartan has been a huge part of my transformation. The, just to follow up in the whole Lopez thing, I don't think I have convinced a, sec, a single person to actually get out of the couch. What I am is uh, taking the excuses away from them. Like, uh, I don't want to say be, be an object of... Um, I don't know how to say it. I, I don't want to say, like, my injuries are going to define who I am. But the fact is that I am injured, you know? And you have to look at it. If I can do it, what is your excuse? Tell me, you know? Right. I have a leg injuries. Like actually, my left leg is reconstructed. I'm missing an arm. My right arm has a metal plate, and my right foot has limited mobility. So, like, all four extremities. So, why can't you tell me? What is your reason? But you, you provide the vehicle for people to go do things they could do anyway, I guess is what you're saying. Yes, sir. They could do it, mm-hmm. and they do do it. Yes, sir. You're just the spark. You, I, you can say that. Right? You provide the vehicle. I'm the spark. You're the spark. And because um, it's hard for anybody to say no to you. Yes, sir. I don't take no for an answer. Now, you were saying something earlier before we got started mm-hmm. about um, a gogi. You don't want to water it down. Explain Explain that. A gogi, by the way, for those listening, is a you know 60-plus hour challenge that we put on where we teach people some skills, survival mm-hmm. skills. We teach them what they're capable of. We teach them how to get through tough times. Mm-hmm. And you've done a bunch of them. Agogis are part of uh, Spartan endurance events. And obstacle course racing is great. I love it. Um, it's a short distance. We are faced with 30, 40 obstacles. And we help each other go across. I believe the difference with endurance is endurance will test you. It will actually make you dig deep inside and ask yourself, you know, why am I here? What is my purpose? Why am I putting myself through 60 hours of hell right here? Because there's no other way to say it. Spartan Endurance goes by the warrior ethos. And you were having, you were having um, a little bit of conflict. Mm-hmm. I want it. Right? Yes. I will always place the mission first. I will always place the mission first. Versus I will never leave a comrade behind. Exactly. And so how do you reconcile that? I actually... Um, just came to the realization, like, once your mission is to get your fellow comrade across the finish line or through the 60 hours, right. number four is actually, right. you're, will you're, be the goal. Right, so, so it is reconciled. No, exactly. So you no, need to make sure, what you're saying is you need to make sure that uh, you clearly define the mission. Because if the mission is, I will win at any cost, mm-hmm. that's a different mission. Exactly. So that's what I wanted to say. Like, for me, like, the endurance events... Right. So I have failed some, 
because um, I show up in New Jersey with a wheelchair, Amanda Sullivan in crutches, and a series of disabled athletes. And let's say we didn't complete the time, the time hacks, but you know what? We went through it 12 hours together. Right. So that you, was you my achieved, mission. You achieved what, I, I, right. I achieved my mission, and that's one thing that I have always said about the, the agogi. The agogi doesn't have a finish line. The agogi, you will, fi you will find why are you here, what you hear. There is no way to know. Like when I participated on my first one, I had no idea why I was here. Like I just actually, Erica Walker signed me up for it, started this. And all of a sudden, that was a, a brutal winter. Uh, we had so many dropouts within the first couple of hours. My entire team was gone. And I'm sitting there like, so I'm not getting any, anyone across the line. Like, why am I here? And I met this guy, Randall. He put his back down. He was searching for the belt. And I remember actually, I took the backpack from him, not knowing him, and I was like, keep walking, we're gonna go. And that moment actually changed my life. I actually, I work a lot more with civilians right now. Um, the guy, is an, he's an animal. I see him constantly on the courses. Sometimes I'm going through my first lap and he's running the third or the fourth lap. Wow. He was just having a bad moment. And for him, like, you know, like some stranger helping him change. And that, that actually, that opened my eyes. You know, it doesn't matter who it is. Like, you can always make someone's day better. And you don't know what that's going to represent in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's next for you? I'm going to continue with the Honor Series. We have a lot of big stuff coming up. Isn't it awesome we get to go around the world and do this stuff? Absolutely. And um, as we go around the world, I love that there's always something to learn. Like, I mean, like... China, like you see, you see like how it was in China. Like right now, we're going actually to the other side of the wall, yeah. And we're gonna see like how much effort it took. Like uh, everything is easier to understand once you put it into perspective. Sure. So once we see this, uh, once people see the size of those stones that had to be moved, you know, and placed in there, yeah, you're gonna see actually like, and they were doing it to protect their lives, to protect their families, you know, to stop a war. Yeah. And it's going to put it into perspective, like what hard work actually really means. Makes it hard to complain about yes, it in, in, in our own lives. Mm -hmm. um, take a break? Yeah, let's take a break. We'll do, um, we'll do some rope climbs. All right. <laughs> My favorite. We're going to take a quick break from that great uh, episode everybody's listening to and come up here on top of Morzine Mountain yeah, yeah. and take just a few minutes kind of for those iTunes listeners to describe what it looks like up here, right? For sure. Absolutely gorgeous. As I'm talking, I got a pack of about 20 mountain bikers coming out me in a little bit, no more than Yee! 50 yards away. There's guys paragliding. Yeah. We're, we're on a beautiful mountain. It's a Spartan European Championship today, Absolutely. right? And we've got about 8,000 runners somewhere on this mountain. Uh, just crushing it. Yeah. And a lot of them are probably f doing all right and feeling pretty good, hopefully, because they've drank their athletic greens before this race. And this is a new part. I, I don't want to say new. We've been drinking this for a yeah. while now yeah, right. for a Spartan Up podcast. And um, I want to say I can sincerely say I'm feeling better. You guys tell me I'm looking better, which I appreciate. Yeah, I know. You are. But it, it's, you know... It really is nice to be able to get all your nutrients in one place. And, Sephra, I know we defer to you a lot on the nutritional side of it because you actually know what this stuff is. But I want to mention there's 75 natural raw ingredients in here, most of which I've never heard of, many of which I would never have gotten into me. And I'm getting them all in at once. It's pretty amazing. I mean, guys, everyone hopefully listening to this podcast is interested in athleticism or health to some degree. And you can do all these things and run around and do all these amazing run and glide off mountains and go mountain biking. But if you don't have good nutrition coursing through your veins, you're not going to have the longevity or the endurance you want. You're not going to be able to go as hard and as long. And ultimately, you're building muscle and you're helping out your body with one. It's like if the building blocks it's building on, like the soil that your plants grow in, has all the nutrients you need. That's what builds strong bones. That's what builds strong friendships. That's what, what? builds strong experiences. I was wondering because we, um, at some point, we had interviewed some, um, the couple, the fruitarian couple, and they talked about. You the, love them. Yeah, I did. Um, that they talked about the recuperation powers. Yeah. You know that they they weren't they weren't telling you to take this and you will be a better athlete, but they were telling you that you could you were going to recuperate quicker. Yeah, for you sure. You weren't going to get the inflammations. You were going to feel yep. better. You're going to be able to push. So not necessarily maybe run faster, but you're going to be able to run that second day. 
Hundred you know, percent. So, and, and and I think that this has very much the same quality. Hopefully, that third day and that four hundredth day. <laughs> but something else with that, though, when you mentioned about it has all the nutrients, you think about what it takes to get these into you, like to get the different vitamins, to get the different microbiotics. And usually, we have to eat a lot of food to get that in us, and our body craves all those things. So, if you have to eat fourteen different foods to get a third of what's in here, you're going to eat those fourteen foods. The nice thing is, you take this; it fulfills a lot of that. And then the food you're having is really just for calories because this is taking care of a lot of nutrients. Yeah, as I said sometime earlier, this is a gap filler. Sure. Right? Yeah. You, take, you take these once or twice during the day, right? Yeah. Uh, especially when you get up in the morning. Yep. Right? And this is going to get you going, and it's going to hit you with that, with all of those ingredients at once. But it's if you take it in the packet, yep. it's already measured out. If you do the scoop, problem is with me with scoops, I, I, I don't ever level them off, you know. I, yeah, sure. A uh, big scoop or two scoops. If one's good, you need better. a big scoop. No, but if, but if one scoop is good, two is better mentality. Yeah, and many people have that. This is this makes it easy. It's, it's already in for you. And the, and the reason and the reason why it's easy is because what's in there, right? Without you even knowing, because it, it tastes delicious. That's targeting your liver. It's like, I'm going to give your liver a little help. It's targeting your lungs. I'm going to give your lungs a little help. Targets your brain. Targets anti-inflammatory, anti-depression. Helps your eyes. There's stuff in there that goes like, whoop, 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 to every part of your body. I, I, I've heard that when yeah, I drink yeah, this. Yeah, when I drink it, that's what I hear. Yeah, so then your body goes like, whoo, thank you. All right, let's go party. Yeah. In the outdoors. I, I, I just want to mention, too, that the great thing is, you know, we talk about athletes, talk about business people. We talk about the person who can't rip themselves off, off the couch. This is something that any of them can have. Like, if you're a busy person, it's easy to drink this. If you're a lazy person, it's easy to drink this. If you're a person who's never had good nutrition, it's easy to get started with this. So the fact that it's so easy, uh, we're up, like I say, we're up at the top of a mountain. If you're at the top of a mountain, if you're in a boardroom, if you're on the couch, I really highly recommend Athletic Greens. It's good for anybody. I know you can't wait to get back to this interview with Lopez and Joe DeSena. But first, Spartans, I want to tell you something. We've all seen adaptive athletes kicking butt on the course. Well, guess what, adaptive athletes? Now we have a race just for you. Spartan is making history with the first ever elite para race heat. This race is a big deal with $10,000 on the line for the winning team. The event will be open to 10 teams of four and follows the Paralympic classification standards for participation. The race takes place November 17th at Laughlin, Nevada. So go to Spartan.com, search for the Laughlin race, and find out the details. Now we'll get back to Lopez. He's killing me. 100 rope climbs, that was a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> the, the guy uh, makes me look like a powder puff. I don't ever want to take anything away from what Spartan, you know, like we, we, we do this as a as a team building event, but it, it is a challenge, and that's how I took it. I remember preparing for my first Spartan race. I love the amount of fear that you actually or the, the course put into my heart and I honestly burpees were never an option you know if I felt an obstacle I would do the burpees but I would never choose burpees over facing the main obstacle sure. so I saw the course and I'm like I gotta learn how to climb rope with one hand and that was my my goal and I focused on that it was day after day I believe it took me about seven months every single day like my hands were full of blisters, Bleeding, my legs. Yeah, yeah. Well, you clearly work. Mm -hmm. What, what advice could you give um, people that have the perfect life, that are not motivated, they can't um, pull ahead, they're not achieving success, maybe, maybe uh, their lives are a little dark? What can you take from your experiences, losing a limb, getting through the military, motivating? Like, what, you got you to boil it down to a couple of tips. It boils down to, you have to like really sit down. I don't know your life. Uh, honestly, I know you're the senior, but I don't know what goes, you know, behind the doors. I don't know how is your life at home, but uh, everyone, no one has a perfect life. And you have to find actually whatever is bothering you, you can turn it into fuel. I'm going to tell you something that is really, really hard because I do a, a lot of public speaking and sometimes my kids are with me. They're with me all the time. It's really hard to actually sit or stand in front of people and actually try to tell them that the reason why I wanted, why I committed attempted suicide was because of my kids and they're standing right there. And actually I prefer, I like that they hear that from me. And the reason why I did it is because I hate failure. And at that point in my life, I just, I wasn't the dad that I, that I dream of being. And I thought it'd be, I don't, I don't know, but it, it made sense at the time. I thought it'd be better off without me. Being that said, that was the reason why I did it. Now, they are exactly, the reason why I strive so hard. Um, I could be one of those veterans and just buy what is called a shadow box, place a flag on the wall, place my awards, and tell 
that's who I was. Right. No one gives a crap who I was. My kids walk into school and say, that is my dad, you know. Like, right. after we accomplished everything, that's, 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 that's who, who I am today. today, you know. Like, right. my story is not who I was. It's who I am or who I'm going to become. And it's amazing. I mean, once again, thank you because it gives them a sense of pride. Like, yeah. they can, they don't, they don't look for anyone outside of the home to be their hero. You know, they're like, my dad can do this, my dad can do that. Right. You are and, uh, you, you are have, hero. You have, uh, you have completely changed me. It's, uh, once again, at the beginning, it was the kids. The kids were made it hard. Like, even going to school to pick him up, like, when you hear the older kids whispering, oh, he has one arm. Or, you know, like, why? And I'm like, oh, I don't want my kids to be the subject of, why is your dad like that? Like, now they say, super proud. My dad has one arm, and he lifts 500 pounds, you know? Sure. What can your dad do? Yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. Well, you're my hero. You're a bunch yeah. of people's hero, oh, um, not, just, not just your family. Uh, Joe? Super inspiring to be around you. You never, uh, you never slow down. Never. I just got to get you off the energy drinks. <laughs> yes, sir. But, uh, yo, just on, honestly want to thank you. Um, there is one thing, like, when you think of the Spartan culture, maybe I'm not, I'm not a history buff, so I will go to the movie and, like, what I know about like, the Spartans, what they're going through. And you have put so much into, actually, into the adaptive community. Like, Spartan itself, like, you know, you have the pro athletes that are going out there and killing it. I don't want to say the percentage, but a big percentage of the people that are actually going to a Spartan race is because this is the next challenge for them and it's helping them overcome like their uh, weight problems, uh, some health issues, yeah. whatever it is. And like this course means so much and you recognize it. Like you have done things that haven't been broadcast. I mean, like the orphanage in, in Florida, like yeah. you took all those kids into the course, fed them, did everything. That is a day that will change their life. We're going to continue to do this stuff. And every time that we have a project, I mean, like from wounded veterans to civilians, you know, like you're always there. And uh, that's something that I admire because you're not just saying you have these and you're very competitive. This is the only race where you're penalized, where time matters, you know. Right. But it's not just the competition side. You're not just looking for athletes per se. You're actually like... Helping I'm just the everyday for, I'm just person. Looking for people to be better. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this, Absolutely. Is a, this is a betterment company. Yes, sir. Right? How do we? How are we better today than we were yesterday? And by yes, the sir. way, I wish I could do more. I wish the government. Maybe you could talk to Trump. I wish mm -hmm. the government would pay us <laughs> to do this because the country it needs be, it. Yeah, it should actually. Honestly, I agree. It should be a program like. You call it obstacle course racing. In the military, we actually, we call these courses confidence building. Right. Uh, that's, a, that's right. It is. It's a confidence building course. And right. a lot of them um, are on, you're only able to achieve them through teamwork. They're team building exercises. That's what builds the bond. Like, um, I do this with my wife. I do this with a lot of people. And I tell them, this is my version of, you know, that exercise when they say, like, close your eyes, fall back, and sure. your partner will catch you. Uh, my wife does that. She's probably going to hit the floor. Right. My version is, you know what, let's go out there. And I'm going to show you that no matter what, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there on this side of the wall or in the other one to catch you, but we're going to be there. This uh, is build confidence. Uh, people walk out of here with their head high, sure. bruised up, but with their heads up high and always seeking the next, you know, next what is next. Mm -hmm. I was like, right now, I'm focusing very much in, this, in the endurance side of it because... I want people to tap, like I, I want them to hurt, and I want them to like really tap inside. And find out capable. why am I here? Yeah. And it's amazing. I want to tell you something, like struggling keeping up with Amanda Sullivan. Yeah. She's going through these mountains. It sounds like a horse because of the <laughs> arm crutches. I hear four steps at a time. I love it. I'm like Jesus. Thank you You're so awesome. much, man. Thank you. No, thank you. How awesome was he? He was incredible. And the thing that really jumped out at me was he said that when he was able to start recovering was when he stopped blaming the person who was responsible for it and realized that he had to A, accept it, you know, embrace his current situation because you, you were talking off camera before and saying that, you know, he said, I got to stop looking at my story being who I was or even who I am, but it's who I'm going to be now, what I'm going to become. And the, the minute he said, this is my situation, this is what I got, I can now build on that. I think we could all take a little uh, from that and apply it to our own lives. Oh, sure. Right? Absolutely. We, we, we all want to talk about the reason I'm the way I am is because of this thing, as if it's an excuse, right? right? As opposed to, yeah, who you are is a result of everything that's happened so far, but it's who are you going to be now? 
Change, because, change your story. You make your story what you want your story to be. Yeah, exactly. Right? Absolutely. And, and how do you want your story to be told? No, exactly. No, you're right. I was just going to say, it's all about overcoming circumstances, right? I mean, you can let them beat you or you beat them, right? Yeah. And again, it goes back to what can you control? You, you cannot control the past. Whatever position you're in, the answer is you have to move, yeah. right? Because you, it, nothing's going to get better by standing still. Yeah. If, you're, if you're in pain, if you're separated, if, you, if, you're, if you're in a dark place, staying there is not the answer, right? And wallowing in the pity and all of that is not the way to go. The only way to go is to get up in the one foot in front of the other. And sooner or later, you find yourself trotting and running. And then when you reach that, that level, you're grabbing other people's hands and you're pulling them along. And that's where he's at. And that very difficult thing that happened, that so many people want to use that as their excuse, that very difficult thing that's happened is what now empowers you to help other people. Because if you've had an easy life and everything's just come to you, you joke with people all the time and you go, so you've just had an easy life, everything's been simple. When you know full well they haven't. But the idea is that an easy life isn't going to get you anywhere, and it's not going to let you help anyone because you say, well, I'll tell you how to succeed. Have a real easy life, <laughs> right, as no, opposed I, to that I, thing that happened. I like, um, I like this idea, which you and I have talked about. We've all talked about it for a long. I get to do this, yeah. right? Yeah. I get to yeah. suffer. Because I can. And I think, yeah, and, yeah. I th- and I think he's, he's there, right? Yeah. I mean, again, you, you see him on the interview, but I'd urge anybody to go out and look at look look him up, look at the videos of him and the rest of it. He's running up to an obstacle doing a 400-pound tire flip with one arm. Yeah. He taught himself to climb a rope with one arm. Yeah. You know, I, I've, I ran next to him at the West Point race, and he, he went up the inverted wall and sat on the top, and with the one arm that he has, is reaching it down and pulling people up. I, I couldn't even figure out the balance that he was doing. I mean, just incredible what he's been able to, uh, he's achieved, but then he, then he makes other people do it. A huge That's inspiration for all of us. Cause we have two arms. Right. Right. And right. so we, we can't complain about anything anymore. I, I heard a great parkour guy, uh, you know, parkour. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. and, and, and he said, why do I do this? Because I have two arms and two legs and these are incredible instruments. Why not use them? And most people use them to, stand in an elevator and type at a typewriter. But you don't even need two arms and two legs. And that's the thing that we all think. Here's a guy with one arm. We've got other people we've interviewed who have no arms. Todd Love, no arms, no legs. And they're, they're doing incredible things. I'm I, think it's a, I think it's an agility of the mind, right? Yep. I mean, it doesn't even have to do with the ambulatory aspects of it. I mean, when we're hanging out with Oscar Mike at any race, they are, the out of everyone, you, you see other people walking at races or, or getting downtrodden. These guys are always in a good mood. They're always positive. They're always encouraged each other on. Erica Walker deserves a shout out now because she's just such a powerhouse and has done so much to help with the camaraderie of all of them. And who is she? What is her official so role? Erica, er, er, Erica is ex-military. Yep. Yep. Um, she's got the mindset of a warrior. Uh, she is a warrior. And um, yeah, and so she loves being... Uh, a she test. does, but I mean, she's, uh, I don't know her title either, yeah. uh, events, uh, director of events. Or, yeah. But she has also inculcated herself with Oscar Mike. She got you involved. Right. And she is out there on these courses with them as a group. And Dragging, again, we've talked about falling, it before. Lifting, yeah. Yeah, and wheelchairs, yeah. getting and people. because and because uh, you know any any part of your life, what he's saying is clearly define your goals, right? I mean, you're saying you have these credos you live up to in the military of finish the mission or help your comrade out, but then in a different situation, they're redefining what their goals are, and then they can work collectively together. So whether it's your business or your family or whatever you're doing, make your goals in line with the path that you want to lead to have the story. He also, he also talked about redefining his purpose. And when something like that is taken away from you and you're a person of physicality and now you think, I can't do those things I used to do. You know, so uh, soldiers or um, people in the military who suddenly they lose their legs. It's like, I can't do that thing that I did, the thing that brought value to the world. And, and here's a guy who says, um, I realize that a different purpose. I need to have a new purpose. And my purpose now, it's not even being inspiring, it's being empowering. And so he's created a whole new purpose. He pivots. Yeah, we're going to pivot. We're going to take this on out of here. So if you want to... We could just say toodles. Oh, well, we, we could. Go ahead. Toodles. Stay on the move. <laughs> toodles. That was yeah. awesome. Go ahead. Catch you later. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Athletic Greens. Ensure your body gets the nutrition it needs. Athletic Greens has an offer just for our listeners. Go to athleticgreens.com slash Spartan to get a free box of 20 travel packets with your order, a $100 value. Thanks for listening to another epic story of success. If you like our show, be sure to tell your friends about it. We want to hear from you. 
Just leave us a comment below if you're watching on YouTube, or if you're listening, go to Twitter and find us at Spartan Up Pod or Instagram at Spartan Up Podcast, and let us know what you think. Then go subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you listen to our show. Spartan Up is brought to you by Spartan Race. To find a race near you, visit Spartan.com. <laughs>